your thoughts on the idea of prayer or corporate prayer? Hmm. Oh, nice. You gotta love Facebook. Uh, <laughs> so what is your thought? Or are you having distraction that kind of shows up thinking, oh, it's helpful, it's not. <laughs> well, as I said in the description, I wanted to share some thoughts and ideas. Now, if you don't know, yes, I am currently involved in in my in a house of prayer that's hosted on Zoom. I'm not giving out any information other than that. That's not important. If now I'm gonna pose start with this little uh supposition that you might not know. <laughs> And it's one which might come as a surprise. If someone came to me in ooh, 1995 or seven and said, Barry, you should get involved in in a house of prayer. I, I think I might, I, I know a couple of friends I could pick on. And they came up and told me, you be involved in house of prayer. Yeah, you'd be great hold it, I would have looked at them and like, uh, cuckoo, cuckoo, what are you nuts? I did, I would have done that. Why? Well, at the time, uh, I was somebody who could have think of praying more than a minute or two. <laughs> In fact, I had to I was even asked, and I was very intimidated. I, and I really did feel intimidated uh, back then when somebody asked me how long after I've been hearing them talk about playing two, three hours. I was actually embarrassed to say, uh, I could barely play a minute or two. And that's exactly where I started. I did not start off with forceful eloquence or any of that stuff. I would have looked at some of my friends today were wonderful player uh, intercessors and says, oh crap, uh, let me run away from these guys. I would have done that. That would have been me. So for those of you guys who are kind of uncomfortable and everything, I wanted to share and, and perhaps give you some encouragement and some help in dealing with it. When it comes to the idea of corporate prayer, that there's actually a wide range of ways that it can be put together. All right? For some, they love something called the harp and bowl, which uh, I am not, I've done it, but I'm not entirely comfortable because I do not have a very good singing voice. And tell me to sing my prayer. I actually had somebody say, Pat, I look up to. I was looking at him like, what the? <laughs> yeah, I think you kind of can guess the thought that was coming by that facial. <laughs> because it was for me. Maybe for others, yeah. But I came along and gave it a chance. And, mm, wasn't too great. You, Definitely didn't get me singing. <laughs> but I'm thankful for the opportunity. Now, I'm also aware that some of the other issue is uh, one of politics. One of the things scripture teaches us is, hey, we need to pray for those in authority. Didn't they want you to blindly agree whatever is coming out of Rome. You know, the home of Nero and Claudius and all these other nut jobs who are, who are fond of burning people alive, like candles, all that stuff. Yeah. We're, we're supposed to pray. We were supposed to 
all the praise uh, for those who were persecuting uh, Christians at that time. Mm, okay, so that we, and even I still have a, I hear it, but I, even I kind of had to find it challenging. <laughs> the same thing. And I have been around enough. Now, I'm going to stop some of you right now. <laughs> oh, no. He's a club. He's a club. Um, not so fast. The things I like about Trump, yes. He was right to build the wall, but needed to fix the uh, doorway so people can come in the right way. Okay, did need to do things. His problem was the mouse. It's the mouse, stupid. It's the mouse. <laughs> uh, yike. Yes, I don't mind. I could see being, saying something like that when to that but not this insanity of today. Same thing. Do you, I like the idea of speaking evil uh, against... A no, I don't like what I'm seeing. Okay, I don't agree, but I don't like the uh, demonizing that's going on. That's Both of that is not scriptural at all. There's nothing in there. But I do believe in praying according to what God is saying, and according to his word. And that has to be, I don't care if you're praying at home or in a court, that has to be the underlying principle that guides us in our prayer. <laughs> and it needs to be the whole counsel of God. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Uh, I'm not exactly a conformist. I'm not what old schoolers would call conservative. I'm more like a libertarian type. <laughs> I am, yeah, I'm one of those. Not a progressive. I wasn't planning to get into political ideology, but let's put it this way. Just because someone is a conservative does not make them a Christian. Just because someone is a Christian doesn't I mean, they're conservative. I could say the same thing about progressive. Yes, there are Christians who see themselves as progressive, but that doesn't mean all are like that. Hmm. <sighs> I'm saying, I want to encourage you in getting involved. Why is it so important? Well, first of all, a uh, political ideology should not be the limit test at all. But the recognition that when it came, when it comes to the Christian, the body of Christ, we actually have two separate groups. One group that's led by the heart, the compassionate one, the mercy. Oh my, they're the ones that's going to say, oh my God, these people who are coming in, we got to do something. We got to do, we got to, Fix the problem. Get them out of that damn, those damn cages. Get, do them. Fix, fix this problem and do something. That's great. Praise God for them. Because they'll get off their butt and go charging to the rescue. And do. What, and who cares? The other thing, holy, we'll, we'll, the other side is more the analytical, the brain. They'll, they're like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. There are regulations that need to be respected. What? Fix it, but make sure this is done right, not abused. Hey, it's great you want a compassion, but you got drug smugglers, you got these clowns who are like, opportunity, we need to make sure. And they're right. Both groups are right in their perspective, and that's good. That's why both are needed in the house of prayer. They both provide valuable insight that the other doesn't have. That's a good thing. It's not wrong. It's not wrong to have to be the, for the bleeding heart to get together with the analogical brain, because the, when they get together and they're in agreement that yes, we need to do something, but we do need to put a stop. 
that is far more powerful. And I got news for you. The devil really hates that more than he would uh, a, a bunch of one side or the other. That's number one. That's why it's so important that we become uh, united uh, with unity. And yet, unity does not mean conformity. <laughs> unity means, hey, we're both, the different sides have value and they have something to contribute. That, that's the part I really want to point you to. Not this idiotic, uh, progressive, conservative. That's not Christianity! It never was, and it never will be. I have a friend who told me, oh, Charles Krauthammer, a famous psychiatrist uh, journalist on Fox News. He, oh, he was, he's a conservative. He must be a Christian. I just looked at him and said, no, I, I hate to break it to you, but Charles is not a Christian. <laughs> he was a, I think he was a secular Jew who came to realize that there was a greater power or something like that. He never came out and said, Jesus is Lord. Not that I know of. He may have at one time, but at, a, at some point, but he was not. Just because someone is conservative does not make them Christian. Just because someone is a Christian doesn't mean they can't be progressive in some respect or liberal. And I, and I actually hate using progressive for a very simple reason. Progressive uh, ideology says we, we humans need to evolve to the next level. We need to evolve to, uh, to become greater than what we are now. Think of, of the scene you're seeing in Star Trek Next Generation, Deep Space Nine. How did that one of the characters say when he was asked about the issue of money? Oh, I'm human. We evolved past the need uh, for money. We evolved past that greedy, that base nature we used to have. That's how progressive ceasing of moving forward and social institutions are supposed to reflect that ever-changing evolution. <laughs> yeah. So, if anything, progressive have more in common with conservative. Conservative look back and say, we need to preserve these social institutions. We need to preserve this for the next generation. Progressive, we need our social institutions to move forward. Classic liberal or libertarian is individual freedom. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the textbooks. You, you see why I don't like ideology being mixed in with Christianity? Because they don't really belong, even though they have some semblance of, of value? Sheesh. <laughs> but let's get back to talking about corporate prayer. The fact is, the body of Christ has many members, and each member has a role to play. Now, I'm going to uh, follow a page from a gentleman, a fellow I know, Stephen Hill, I think it was. He is kind of like one of a grand church type person. He believes, kind of like the house church, but Here's the thing, he's not a fan of organized religion. He once made a comment once on the timeline, I participated in the conversation, it was about intercessors. Steve is quite right in saying there's no special calling for only a select few to be intercessors. Hmm, yet to know, Steve, <laughs> yet to know. We are all called to play. And he is right. There is no, okay, that one group gets to do the playing. I don't have to do anything. No, we are all called to play. We all have something to contribute. We all have a need to pray for others, to pray for the leaders, pray uh, for here at in the sea and on behalf of our neighbors. We all have that. Yes, there are people who are called to be intercessors. 
They are the ones who are going to be dedicated to playing, period. They're the ones who are, and that's true. That's a great thing. But don't let that discourage you uh, from getting involved with the health program. I think that's a beautiful thing. It's also a great way for you to learn, too. Hmm. But what about, what about, well, that's one of the nice things I like about Zoom is uh, everybody gets to participate. Uh, there's no one person with a mic. Because the truth is we all have a mic uh, built into a webcam or or perhaps something like what I got. <laughs> and even though I got a big mic, I'm, I don't, all my friends are just as capable, if not more so, than I am. And <laughs> But that's the beauty of it. We all get to participate. And there's no one superstar. <laughs> uh, there's another thought. Uh, and this was one that you two. Player is like weight training. Yeah, it really is. When I first started weight training a long time ago, uh, maybe I can get too uh, small weight to build. But over time, I didn't get uh, oh, this overnight. This came from constantly uh, building the muscle and same thing with prayer. It's like you've got to build that muscle. And over time, it gets stronger and you're more able to do a uh, longer prayer session. Same thing. And by the way, uh, did you notice I didn't say a word about praying in the spirit or praying in tongue? <laughs> I haven't got to that yet. I'll get to that later. First, you need all this before you start dealing with that. <laughs> See, I'm trying to help you with this uh, stream to help you build some confidence in prayer, okay? And that's the thing. But praying, what about praying in God, according to God's will? As you get to know oh, the, the whole council of scripture and that's one of the nice thing about house of prayer you have different people who have different levels of knowledge that can come together and you get a better picture of what the father is saying on different issues plus you guys get to come together and ask the lord hey father what is your will on this issue because we are to pray father let your will be done according to as you see it, not man's opinion. That's actually important because we want God's will done, his perfect will, his view on the issue, not our own. <laughs> our view is flawed, <laughs> okay? I already know these glasses help me, but it doesn't replace uh, perfect eyesight, <laughs> so I need help. Well, the same thing with prayer. We don't uh, pray if we ought. We only know in part, and yes, I'll grab that scripture from First Corinthians 13. We only prophesy in part. We know in part, and yes, we pray in part. <laughs> we do not know all, but the Holy Spirit does, and he is able to guide and direct. You don't need, and he was a help. And he was the one who was helping me in responding to that group from long ago who asked that I felt intimidated. He's the one who put it in my heart uh, to say, oh, I just pray as long as the Holy Spirit <laughs> leaves. I thought I was uh, blowing smoke. Actually, I was telling the truth. I just didn't know. <laughs> See, that's the beauty. You can count on him to help you. You can count on the Lord to help you. And you can learn. 
Now, there's a great exercise I've gotten it to, is the more you know the word, and you can learn how to turn the, the Psalms and certain key scriptures into praying. If you're not sure of what, ask Jesus. Ask him, Holy Spirit, how can I do this? Or just be honest. If you're struggling or you feel like, eh, I don't know, I feel uncomfortable with this idea, ask him. Ask him, Lord, is what so and so saying correct? Because I feel uncomfortable. Ask him. He'll help you, he'll shed light. <laughs> Uh, on the situation to help you with praying. Because <laughs> we really, according to, even it was said in Romans 8, but we do not uh, pray as we ought, but it's the Holy Spirit in us who's praying for us, through us, and with us. He's helping us in our prayers. He's helping us in our weakness. <laughs> so you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> That's the Now, let's get to the one which I deliberately left uh, to the end. <laughs> Praying in tongues. Ooh, ooh, oh my God. <laughs> I actually think that some people, I believe that the gifts have continued. All right, and I believe that some people have, have uh, gone cuckoo. Cuckoo! <laughs> and made it sound like anything but what it is. All you're doing is praying in the Spirit and inviting the Holy Spirit, and you're praying by faith. And by faith, you're praying through the Holy Spirit uh, to the Father and asking for whatever it is that's on your heart or what the Lord is. I read Dr. Bill Hammond's uh, book on 70 reasons, one of the things he recommended was to start by intentionally praying for something. Start off in English so that your mind's a little fruit, is fruitful and like say, oh, I'm praying on this issue. Let me go ahead, switch over the tongue and let the Holy Spirit pray through you. <laughs> That's all it is. Paul makes it very clear how the gift of tongue is to be used. <laughs> and it is a beautiful gift. It's a great way to get things. So could you really asking the Holy Spirit to help you? Letting he'll pray through you about whatever the issue. If you need to know something, he'll give you that revelation. <laughs> oh. And you learn these things through praying with others. That's one of the many be benefits. <laughs> ah. All right. Uh, I actually enjoy doing Facebook Live. The problem, my challenge is, is that I have no way of knowing how well uh, this video is doing uh, until later. So I'd love to see comments. Do you like this kind of video? <laughs> and yes, feel free to look at some of the others. Oh, uh, because, oh wait, 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 wait. I apologize, there is one thing that just came to mind. <laughs> you see, the other day I did a short video, four minutes, and you'll see it uh, as one of the things I posted to my uh, timeline here in Christianity Explained. Uh, it was based on Luke chapter 18. One of the problems that we've had, I've seen over the years, and it's not just a recent thing, is a lot of people were praying on, on the issue, on, on certain issues. And I'm being neutral deliberately because the election of 2020 isn't the only one. There are plenty of others. The thing is, 
we have a, dif a difficult time with learning to be persistent in our prayer and persevering, pushing through in spite of what we see around. And Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, is should be a very familiar par parable for you. It was the widow and the unjust judge. Your Honor, Your Honor, I need protection against my oppressor. I need your help, Your Honor. I need you to intervene, Your Honor. She kept going. That lady was a widow, and she had some real problem with, I don't know if it's creditors, somebody, some people who were harassing her, and she needed justice to be done. She needed protection against uh, whoever was, co was causing problems. So she kept going to this judge who, was, who didn't give a crap about man's opinion. He did not fear God or any, had any such thing. And, but this lady kept going, not two or three times. She kept going and going and going. And I'm knocking on, the, uh, on my uh, cabinet over here to, to emphasize how she kept going, and now I'm sure she did speak with a certain level of respect. But the judge eventually said, no way, I better give this woman, even though I don't feel God, uh, and I don't give a crap about m men, uh, I better get, give this woman what she's after, uh, because she'll weary me with constant coming and coming. Oh my God, I gotta, what a stop to this woman. <laughs> That's what she did. And guess what? Listen to what the, un Jesus concluded it by saying, listen to what the unjust judge said. Will not the God of all the earth, will not the God of justice, who is good and doesn't delay as we think uh, delay, uh, follow through in delivering justice for those who cry out uh, to him day and night. <laughs> the point is, it's not enough to just pray oh, a couple of times. Oh, okay, not will. No, it's to keep going, keep going, keep going. That was the reason for a lot of the 24-7 prayer thing. And we need to be learn to be persistent and to be consistent, not to be afraid of it. And yes, sometimes we do need to fine tune. And I, Pat Lord, help me, Father, fine tune me to fine tune my prayer so that it is effective and right. For the effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. That was from James when he was speaking of Elijah, who was a man just like us. And yes, uh, that includes women, okay, I am aware. But thank you uh, for your time. I appreciate uh, your coming and watching this whole video. <laughs> Hope you have a blessed day, and see you when I see ya.